if he's willing to put forth the effort, I have the utmost confidence that Sierra Wright will see his potential. Fuck yeah! <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm slapping that down. Fuck yeah! Because of the fact that all of the drawbacks, everything you hear about, that everybody's got a concern. Oh, well, he's is he really all 100% into football, or is it is it more his acting career? Why is he coming to Lincoln, Nebraska, out of Hollywood? If that's if he's really yeah, worried about his acting, it's career? not about his acting career. Um, is you know is he is he dedicated? Is he going to work hard? All these things. He, Matt Rule and company is not taking a guy in, especially in the middle of a cycle. They're not going to take the chance of bringing a guy like that onto the team just so they have to kick yep. him off again. No, and most of his performance drawbacks, if there are any. Come from a full team performance, not just his yeah. performance. Well, and also, because that USC defense was fucking awful last also, year. 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, he's gonna go! Holy cow! Big red junkies. Game by day, game by day, he gets better, 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 We are talking DBs, not douchebags and not Damon Benning. Um, Although we might reference Damon Benning and a douchebag or two. I'm not sure, but. Which is not the same. No. No, 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 no. I was not calling Damon Benning a douchebag. Just making sure. No, not not what not whatsoever. Um, no, but we're talking about the potential depth issue or overabundance of depth issue that we might be running into um combined with a lack of experience uh in the DB room. But also addressing the new guy that we have coming in, Sayer Wright, transfer in from USC. It's so funny to listen to what every pundit out there, both podcasters and local media guys, radio guys, writers, everything, everybody is all over the map on whether or not they like this kid coming in. Yeah. It's crazy to me. Um, I think he's got an interesting backstory. I mean, if we're going to talk about LeBron James' son, if I have to hear about LeBron James' son anymore this summer, I'm glad that it's this one. Uh, For those of you that don't know, the kid has a little bit of an acting career, uh, and he actually... Instead of Bronny James, LeBron James' son, who just got drafted by the Lakers in the second round, instead of letting him play basketball as LeBron James' son in a basketball movie, Space Jam 2, um, they cast Say You're Right to go in and play LeBron James' son. Just so out of left field. If so I'm just, well, like, and for the old because guys. The cornerback at a USC to be in a, a game about basketball instead of the guy's son. And for the old guys that don't have young kids that had to see Space Jam 2. I didn't know he was the son in that movie either because I don't watch that movie. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching the movie. I don't remember him being. You, you in told it, me about it. I was like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. Like, it's not like I recognized him or anything like that. But um, apparently, he has a little bit of an acting career. He's been in a couple shows, been in several commercials. Um, I think one of the primary reasons that he is coming to Nebraska is to escape that. He mentioned, and it's been you mentioned for our NIL program. Well, I mean, that might be part of it. But um, I think he had opportunities to go places. The guy was a fringe five star. He was a, he was a four star across the board recruit coming out of high school. He was like a mid mid ninety five rating guy. Um, he actually coming in will be Nebraska's highest rated high school recruit on the defense. When you think about all the studs we have on the defensive side of the ball, he'll be the guy with the highest recruiting rating coming out of high school. His transfer rating is not as big. But what you got to remember is on those on those high school recruiting rankings, the number that they're assigning them, the, the the all that scouting that's done is about their potential for the NFL. So this kid has a high ceiling. And so I'm excited about it. I think that if you had told me that it, you know, if it was if it was January 31st and you had told me that Bly Hill and Sayer Wright were both in our transfer class coming in heading into the spring, I think everyone would agree that they would have been far more excited about a former four star transferring in from USC with, you know, basically 15 games of. Well, 11 starts. Yeah, 11 in starts. Power five. Uh, 11 starts, too. 15 games of experience, yeah. power five. Um, yeah, he played on a shitty defense in USC. Lincoln Riley's been known to have a shit defense. And 
he doesn't really care about the defense, or at least he hadn't prior to this offseason where he was basically told, bro, you got to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, that actually, it, it, I, I understand that him being on USC's defense and them being as bad as they were last year can bring a pause to some people. That actually kind of gives me a little bit of comfort from the fact that he was so highly rated and he was probably just so poorly mismanaged and miscoached from, from that standpoint. Like, he might actually be an incredible player who was just with a bunch of other Squandered. incredible players and had awful coaching at USC. Well, yeah. and, and the weird thing is, like, we can kind of almost compare him to. I'm not trying to say these are apples to apples scenarios because uh, there's a lot of different situations that we can apply to these two players. But for our own guys, a uh, Malcolm Hartzog, who started halfway through the season uh, two years ago and flourished for the rest of the season. Malcolm Hartzog had a kind of a down year last year. Yeah. You get a year right who had, who had 11 starts in 2022. He comes in in 2023. He plays barely half the first half of the season, and then he leaves the program. So I don't know what it was that brought him down. This is hopefully going to be a bounce back season for Sierra, right? Just like we hope for with Malcolm Hartzog in a general sense. But I know we're trying to stick with Sierra, right? In a, a aspect, but I don't really know where we, we come for with Sierra, right? It, it helps that, I mean, I, it sounds really terrible that I say it helps with Fly Hill being injured because obviously we don't want anybody to be injured. <laughs> no. But well, forgetting that it helps it, as far as a position where we needed more guys. Yes, this is a perfect fit. Like we we have seventeen of our twenty four guys in the defensive back room are either freshmen or true freshmen or a redshirt freshman or true freshman, and then the seventeenth guy is Bly Hill, who is a sophomore. But he's a guy that's coming from St. Francis University that nobody knows where the hell yeah, it's we, at. We don't even know where it was. Yeah. So 17 of our 24 defensive backs like have zero, basically zero experience. Yeah. And to be able to bring in a guy like this is going to be very big for us, whether Bly Hill is injured or not. You know who's probably really excited? Deshaun Singleton. So now he has some actual um, experience yeah. on the field with him. Yep. Yeah. On the opposite side of him, exactly. That's yeah. what I mean. On he, the defensive back, yeah. He, he actually has on the cornerback that he, side. I'm sorry. He doesn't have to coach up as much as a player. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the the easiest comparison here, and I've heard Mitch Sherman brought it up. I think I think you can draw almost a direct correlation to, at least it gets me excited looking at to Tommy Hill on this. Mm -hmm. uh, Tommy Hill coming out of high school, he was a year prior, so he was the 2020 class instead of 2021 class. But Tommy Hill went to Arizona State. He was the number 11 athlete listed, but he came out as a four-star, 91-rated prospect. When he, trans when he transferred over to Nebraska, his rating had gone down to a 90. Say you're right, was the seventh-rated cornerback in the country coming out in the 21 class. He had a 95 rating at a four-star. Comes across as a three-star with an 88 rating coming in, but he left the team in the middle of the year last yeah. year. So he he had some turmoil. He played on a really, really, really bad defense. And it's one of those things where maybe he understood he was being squandered and he understood that, you know, he didn't feel like he was in a competitive situation that was going to make him better, which, I mean, if you're a guy who's coming out of high school with a 95 rating like that, you have full expectations of reaching the NFL someday. Yep. Um, and if you're not getting coached up the way you expect to be coached up, that's going to be a problem. Size wise, they're super similar. Tommy Hill, 6'1, 185. Uh, Sear Wright is 6'0, uh, 180. I mean, you can look at a lot of what these guys have gone through, and they, they have a very similar trajectory, except for I would say Sear Wright probably has a higher ceiling. So that's what gets me hopefully, excited about this. Hopefully, has a higher ceiling. Hopefully, has, well, I mean, was projected to have a higher ceiling coming out of high school. And, you know, Sear Wright has to also put forth the effort. Yes. If he's willing to put forth the effort, I have the utmost confidence that Sierra Wright will see his potential. Fuck yeah! <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm slapping that down. Fuck yeah! Because of the fact that all of the, all of the drawbacks, everything you hear about, that everybody's got a concern. Oh, well, he's, is he really all 100% into football, or is it, is it more his acting career? 
Why is he coming to Lincoln, Nebraska, out of Hollywood? If that's if he's really yeah, worried about his acting, it's career? not about his acting career. Um, is you know is he is he dedicated? Is he going to work hard? All these things. He, Matt Rule and company is not taking a guy in, especially in the middle of a cycle. They're not going to take the chance of bringing a guy like that onto the team just so they have to kick yeah. him off again. No, and most of his performance drawbacks, if there are any. Come from a full team performance, not just his yeah. performance. Well, and also that USC defense was fucking awful last also, year. Also, they're not going to bring in a guy like that to disrupt what they're trying to build right now. No, no, nope. He still has a year of eligibility left on his belt here. Um, but at the same time, the other thing, the other side of it for me is, you know, it, at the very worst, he's a Reek Gilbert of last year. Yeah, and and they still didn't let something that crazy. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm, that's not I'm, that's not that dig at mental health because he clearly has some mental health issues. But something that wild happened and it didn't affect the team. I'm not worried about like I I don't see a downside to bringing him in, and I also don't see him taking a shot coming to Nebraska if he doesn't see the upside and the potential for him to actually get starter minutes. I agree. So, kind of almost taking it off of Sierra Wright. What do you think of the development? Of whether it's bringing in Sierra Wright, moving Jaden Doss to the defensive back position, we we did a show a handful of weeks ago of ranking our positions. Um, how does that affect how you think of our defensive back room in a general sense, as far as ranking them? We've always talked about how top heavy they are with a Deshaun Singleton, Tommy Hill, Isaac Gifford, possibly a Malcolm Hartzog, Marcus Buford. And then everybody after that, the experience is just flat out not there. Where do, where does that put your uh, concern as far as the defensive back room? Nothing Coming, but going upside. into the 2024 season. Nothing but upside. It only improves my thoughts about the DB room. Really? Really. Well, I mean... You're it, adding experience with, with... Well, no, no. I'm talking about in a general sense of... I'm not necessarily just talking about the Sierra Wright thing anymore. It's... Sierra Wright adding needing to add Sierra Wright, uh, moving Jaden Doss from a wide receiver to a defensive back. Hell, we moved Jeremiah Charles from a wide receiver to a defensive back. Yeah, the fact that we're moving all of these guys to the defensive back room shows to me at least that there's a necessity there. The thing you got to remember is whether it's wide receiver or DB or tight end for that matter. He's looking for a specific skill set when it comes to the athletic ability, not necessarily the football ability, but the athletic ability. And so, which is the Jeremiah when, Charles thing. When, exactly. Yep. When, the, when they're looking at a guy like that or Jaden Doss, they're looking and they're saying, okay, cool. Well, you meet these criteria from a, from, from a physical athleticism standpoint, which side of the ball are you going to gravitate more to when it comes to your skill set and what we can coach up? And, you also kind of have to look at the fact that there is it's pretty it's pretty top end on the wide receiver side of the ball where you're looking at and saying okay well if you're Jaden Doss there's a good there's a fairly decent chance you're not going to even see the field you're right uh, let alone this year maybe not even next and year if you're if you're on the field you're not one of the top three options yeah you're not one of the top five options probably no. um, that wide receiver and, no. and 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 you've got a shot because the door got kicked wide open by Bly Hill getting hurt. It's it's fair game over there. Nobody's even the anticipated starter at this point. So I only br- not, I only bring up the question it? because that's what Husker fans are trying are saying right now with the the movement of different players over to the defensive back room, the addition to Sierra Wright. Should we be concerned about the defensive that just back room? Tells Here's, me that the coaches are doing their job. I, I'm just I'm just bringing up because Husker fans are concerned about it. Here's the thing. We got 140 optics, plus kids on our team right now. Optics wise, it does look bad. I told, I agree with that. Well, but if you if you're, if I you're trust taking, the system. If you're stepping all the way back and you're looking at the team as a whole, aside from the kicking unit, who who is your first and second most concerned about units? It's running backs and DBs, right? Well, uh, running backs definitely. I mean, you but and I, you and I I'm, specifically I'm saying, had saying, running backs yeah. at last. I know you I was a little concerned about the tight ends. <laughs> we can that could be a different show. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> that still confuses the fuck out of me. Um, but so does the lack of ability from last year. I'm just yeah. But yes, fine. defensive backs. If they are not number two concerned, they're at least three. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think to me, they have to be number two just because it does. The signals are that we don't have a clear cut favorite, but just like in the quarterback room, they're trying to check all the guys out. They're trying to make mm-hmm. sure they do their due diligence and something that we begged, begged Scott Frost to do was put the best athletes and the best talent on the field regardless of where you put them. And to turn off the golden tea machine. And to stop doing coke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fuck yeah! No, he's doing coke. It's... Uh, yeah, foul on the play. Uh, I just... I, I am I'm so happy to see the ability to trust this coaching staff that Matt Rule has. He trusts his coaches to say, you know what, I'm going to take this kid and I'm going to put him in my room and I'm going to see what I can do with him because maybe he, you know, cream rises to the top. Maybe he's going to be that guy. Who knows? Tommy Hill was back and forth, back and forth last year. Yep. And you know what? It seemed like Malcolm Hartsog also, Evan Cooper, you know, talked about it in the spring, spring game when he got up on the podium. I didn't do him a justice last year by switching him back and forth, but they're giving, giving these guys the opportunity to identify where they're going to sit the best where they can give themselves the best shot to get on the field. Just because we're adding dudes to this room doesn't mean anything. The way, the way rule keeps adding to this roster almost makes me feel like he knows that a roster limit's coming, but he's planning on like doing some sort of a freshman team or doing some sort of a practice squad or a JV team. That's not going to count towards that roster limit because otherwise he's cutting like 60 fucking kids right now. They're, they're approaching 50 uh, freshman players coming in just this year. Yeah, yeah. Like, if it's not against the rules, why why not do it? Absolutely. There's like 82 freshmen slash redshirt freshmen yeah. on this team. So yeah, it's to, ridiculous. To see them adding somebody like Sayer Wright makes me feel more comfortable than mm-hmm. anything else. That's why I said I, I think the downside is very minimal. Yeah. Thank if you. anything, he sucks and he doesn't play. Yeah. So so my concern is less now than it was a month ago. Yeah. All right. <laughs> if you want to talk about concerns for this room, yes, there are still concerns. I'm concerned that we're going to lose all 12 games next well, year. Well, and also <laughs> doesn't mean that they're found concerns. And also, like, I'm going to go more long term than short term in the in the whole concern pile of like, it just shows that they will literally do anything that they can with the players that they have. And they will be very open and honest with their communication with those players. And hey, Jaden Doss, hey, I think we you'd be better at defensive back, and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna outline everything that we're gonna do for you. And if you exceed at all this stuff, you will get on the field. We talk about it all the time. Be undeniable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm good with all of it. And yeah. the the fact that these guys are so open and honest with these guys, and hey, I'm sorry if you don't like it. The door's right there. I will help you go to wherever you yeah. need to go. I'll prop you and up in the media for two weeks. If, prior if you so don't like it, do job. better at your current position. Like, yeah. No, and and if and if th- that's not what you want to do, best of luck to you. I will help you go wherever you need to go. And BJ, like you just said, I'll prop you up in the media for two weeks. And or, uh, who? Chief Borders. Chief Borders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll prop you up in the media for two weeks, and chief you'll example. go somewhere. And yeah. <laughs> That was bad. <laughs> that was bad. Was that a rough joke? Fuck yeah! I think, I think that went across the border. <laughs> oh boy! I want we've we've done too much of the soundboard tonight, but I want you to do me a favor right now. Uh, if you haven't, I want you to absolutely hit the like button. Fuck yeah! Hit the subscribe button. Fuck yeah! Share this shit with your friends. Fuck yeah! Go big red. Fuck yeah! And this may be the most unbelievable night in Cornester football history.